All right, let's review some biomolecules. So the basic types of molecules that are important for life. Um, there are four categories. And what I want to do is just have you review them yourself. So, well, I will with you. Um, I want to build this table. So these are the four categories of biomolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. And for each type, there is a monomer. Um, so it's a single like subunit. There's an example, multiple examples of monomers. There's polymers, so more than one, and that, those are then more than one linked together with um, bonded together. And then examples of polymers, and then the function. And functions can depend on whether something is a monomer or a polymer form, but just generally speaking, we can talk about general functions. Let's start with carbohydrates. If you can pause the video and try to fill out this first row for carbohydrates. And here we go. So carbohydrates, um, the single subunit, the monomer is a monosaccharide. Um, examples of this are glucose and fructose that you've probably heard of. Um, so those are really simple sugars, easy to digest because they're already broken down into single subunits, monomers. Um, examples of polymers is um, a polysaccharide. So just to note this, disaccharides, disaccharides are technically more than one, but they have a different name. So a disaccharide would be um, sucrose and lactose. Those are two linked together. Um, those are very common. Um, here, polysaccharide is then means more than two um, in reality for, particularly for, for sugars. Um, so examples of polymers for sugars are carbohydrates, commonly called sugars, right? Glycogen, starch, and cellulose. So cellulose is common in plants. Um, glycogen is the one we'll talk about most in this class. That's how we store our glucose in linked chains in our muscles and liver. So the function of this biomolecule is primarily that, um, and this is a primary function. There's all kinds of subfunctions that all molecules have. Um, very efficient. Life is very efficient at reusing things. ATP that synthesis, of course, and energy storage. So the storage is more of the glycogen, those this long chain one. Okay, please do the same for proteins. All right, so proteins. We've got the monomer is amino acid, and examples are. Hopefully you can remember one amino acid. I'm not going to quiz you on the amino acids, but um, leucine, tyrosine, tryptophan, valine are all amino acids. They're single. So right here, this is one amino acid. Um, when it comes together with another one, peptide bond, that's going to form the polypeptide of it. So more than one amino acid linked together is going to be a polypeptide that then folds to become protein. Um, and I have a future lecture, a little bit of review on protein folding to help us remember how that works because protein structure is so important. Um, so this would be two examples of folded into their tertiary structure proteins that then could have a function. Um, so examples of these polymers, um, hemoglobin, sodium, potassium pump, myosin, all proteins, any protein you can think of. And I'll have some more, we'll have tons of examples throughout the semester of proteins. Function, everything. Um, structure of your body. So um, collagen, keratin, elastin, fibrous proteins, um, movement, communication, basically everything. Probably be hard to put a right answer there. Um, okay, nucleic acids. So the monomer is a nucleotide. Um, the examples of nucleotides, so first of all, nucleotides are a base. So adenine, for example, um, the base Possibilities are A, T, C, and G. And then a nucleotide is combined with a sugar, either deoxyribose or ribose, and a phosphate group. Um, so this is a nucleotide, these three components. And then the A, T, C, G is often used to abbreviate um, the adenosine that is, refers to this entire nucleotide. And important, this obviously then makes up the genetic code. Um, so when you put these all together, nucleic acids are composed of ATCGs in various orders. Um, and that's then called deoxyribonucleic acid or ribonucleic acid, now which sugar it has. And those are DNA and RNA. The other nucleotide we'll talk about quite a bit in this class is ATP, um, adenosine triphosphate. And I've got another slide on that in just a moment. Um, that is 
the, our energy producing molecules. That's how we, that's how we do things. Um, I'll come back to that in just a moment. But that is actually a nucleotide with three phosphate groups on it. And information storage is the main function of nucleic acids. Um, notice, so ATPs have an exception to this um, row here. It's not, it itself is a modified nucleotide. So my function for this row is primarily referring to DNA and RNA as information storage molecules in our genetic information. Last one is lipid. For this one, I'm just going to give this one to you. I didn't want to, lipids are a little more complicated. They're more a little more diverse group. They don't build the same way. They do have some building blocks and different reactions. I just want to give you the couple, maybe what you could do if you want to pause and list a couple lipids you think are important. Okay, so fatty acids are what make up, they're the one of the backbones. Sorry, it's a little bit cut off down here. These would be one fatty acid here, be one of those long chains. Um, a hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't like water. Get more back to that. Um, so fatty acids are components of both triglycerides, which are a lot of your body storage, as well as phospholipids. So phospholipids are going to be very important when we talk about membranes. Cholesterol is another lipid that we'll talk about in this class. Um, it is the precursor to steroids. Steroids are signaling molecules. Um, you may think of testosterone as a steroid, but also um, cortisol, your stress hormone, is a type of steroid hormone. Hormone meaning it signals. Cholesterol is also embedded in your membrane, cell membrane. So the function of these are pretty diverse, diverse, but um, energy storage um, in terms of breakdown into glucose and ultimately ATP, um, push in the cell membrane components, both phospholipids and cholesterol, and then signaling, so those um, steroid hormones. Now this is a good place just to sneak in here, just a little review of ATP. Um, we won't be looking at the structure a whole lot, but just a reminder of it, and it's going to be important. We'll talk about how it's used, right? So um, botanine is the base, ribose, and then three phosphate groups. So it is a modified nucleotide. Adenosine um, monophosphate is what would be in your... Um, your RNA, actually, because of ribose. Um, two more phosphate groups added on there are high energy bonds. When those break, it causes something to happen. Um, that's why it's so important. So what things can happen, um, so work is what we call this, right? Um, our bodies need to do work. So either moving things, transporting things um, in and out of the cells, so ATP is needed to move things against their concentration gradient, which actually is not what is shown in this example here. This one is just phosphorylation, um, activating a protein. You also could have a ATP pump. There's different ways ATP are used. I'm actually not going to go into tons of detail on it, but you just we'll, we'll see it. Um, ATP is used to contract muscles, mechanical work, so contract bioproteins. And then lastly, this is the, the chemical work. So um, basically metabolic reactions that are not, not spontaneous, that require energy input, will require ATP. Um, so we'll come back to times when ATP is needed for functioning in our anatomy and physiology. All right.